I agree with you that you can do it that way. If you're going through the channel, the channel partners, they don't like use the distributors will prob if you're going through a distributor, they're going to want to have exclusivity. The channel partners, unless you're going to the really large ones, which is only about 150 out of 85,000, um, you're they they won't even think about asking for um, for it. Um, so it's just a whole different way, and it's all about you know where you want to go and how you want to go. There's so many different ways to go through the market to go to to the different channels. Anyway, um, I I want to do a couple of things right now. First, I want to really thank the um, the the uh, panel for coming out. Um, they were great, and um, it's gone. You know, oh, you yeah. can talk about SaaS, SaaS, SaaS solutions and and um, you know, so SaaS solutions and uh, and about the cloud and about managed services, but all those are is just different ways. Like our marketplace has changed so much over the years. I've been in it for 33 years. I wrote a book called Do it, How to Successfully Do Business in Canada, which I had some. Oh, here's a couple of them. Um, that was given out to all around the world for, from anywhere our Prime Minister went for something like nine years. He gave out these books until I finally phoned him and, or sent a message into them saying, you know, the book's outdated. Like, stop sending it out. Um, and so I know that mar the marketplace really, really well. Um, you know, and just even on that part, when you talk about things like cloud, well, You've all probably, or most of you have probably heard of uh, timekeeping and like, uh, or t what's it called, buying time um, and all those different things. It's all, I mean, the only difference is, is that now it's got a more sexy title. Um, and, and the technology is obviously better, but technology gets better all the time. What doesn't change is that there's always going to be different ways that you can go to the marketplace. And within, within there, you have to really, really understand what your own company does. So that's the first thing. Like know what you do. What, what do you do good? What do you do bad? And what can you really make money at? Then you have to go out and look at your customers. Who are your customers? What, what do they want? What do they need from you? And then you have to take that and be able to go with an elevator pitch. Does everybody know what I mean by an elevator pitch? Like, basically convince someone to do something else instead of what they're currently doing and why. Um, just really, really simple. Make it, well basically if you can't put it in a legibly on the back of your business card, unless you don't have, unless you've already written on it, but if you can't put it legibly on the back of a business card, then you don't have, a, you don't have an elevator pitch. You probably have a 25 page um, brochure that nobody will ever read. The elevator pitch is unbelievably important. You need one that's going to be for the end user marketplace. And when I say one, if you have different markets, you might have to have a huge marketplace. You're not going to, you're not going to be able to go out there unless you're an IBM or a Microsoft or somebody like that. And even them, um, Microsoft, every major player, pretty much in North America, goes through the IT channel. And the reason that they do it is it's cheaper, even though you have to give away margins. It's faster, it's, um, it's easier to manage, it's easier to up and down, like so you don't have employees, you've got partners. So if, you don't, if the partner's no good, you don't have to worry about how to get rid of them, you just say bye-bye. Um, pardon? Very easily, yeah. Totally. Um, so, but what you do need to understand is what, if you don't understand what you, who, like what your products are, and uh, I would bet, how many people in here have more than five employees? Okay, so for you, I'll bet that if you do one thing, just do one thing, go out and sit down with all of your salespeople in your company anybody who's doing any sales and ask them what their elevator pitch is and I will guarantee you 
that you'll be amazed to find out that every single one of them sounds like a different company. Um, guaranteed. Um, matter of fact, I did one a couple of months ago with a small company. They had five people and they told me that they had, three of them were partners and two were, were, were brought in people. And I spoke to all three of the partners first, one at, one at a time. And they told me they do everything together. Nothing is ever like they, they sit in the same office and do everything. Their elevator pitch, I, there was, I, I took the three elevator pitches that they gave me and I showed them it and I said, okay, somehow in here, there are three separate messages from three separate companies. And they read them and they started arguing in front of me over who was right. And I just sort of looked at that and I thought, this, and I even said to them, I said to them, you know what? When you have your elevator pitch correct, in that all three of you agree, that's when I'll come back, you can call me. I haven't heard from them. Um, and I don't think I ever will, because I think they were too embarrassed to realize that they're no, not going anywhere. Um, as far as I know, there's, they may still be or may not be in business because it, you know, it, was, it wasn't where I'm going to make my money on, that's for sure. Um, the reality is you need to do these things because you need to have a, a story that's always the same. Because even the worst thing in the world that you can pretty much do is if I come in there and I, well, Pam's with me here now, so I'll use her, sorry. Um, but if I go in there and I tell you what our company does, and then she comes in and speaks to you five minutes later and tells you something totally different, you're going to sort of sit there and go, well, I don't know what these guys do. Um, and rightfully so. You need to do that for every single audience that you want to have. Those are some of the first things you need to do. You also then have to figure out how you want to, uh, you need to have before you come into, the, before you start selling in this marketplace, if you want to go through the channel, you have to have the tools that the channel is going to need. So the first thing you need to do is tell them something what the product's about. Then you have to give them pricing, what their margins are going to be, but they're also going to want to know how, how the service is done, how the support is done, um, where the support comes from. They're going to want to have a whole channel partner program. If they bring in a lead um, and they say, okay, we're, we're, we're trying to um, bid on this, are you going to protect them or aren't you going to protect them? Um, are you going to give them some type of exclusivity? Are you not going to give them exclusivity? And I don't mean exclusivity as was being talked about before. I mean just ex ex you know, just on that one account. So are you going to protect them from it? Um, are you going to help them if they need to help? Like, do you have sales support if they if somebody wants more information than what they have already? Those, you know, and there's a lot of other things, but those are the type of things that they're going to want to know um, more than anything else. They're going to want to know who's the right audiences for it. Do they, um, uh, how hard is it to sell the, what's the, what's the usual time from the time that you start speaking to somebody till the time that you start making money? Um, you know, these are the types of questions that you need to have somewhere on a website where they can come to and, 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 and get it. Um, most people will tell you that they need a portal um, so that they, they can come into it and they can take all the marketing materials that they want and so on. Um, that's gonna cost you probably fifteen twenty thousand dollars $20,000 and it'll never be used. Um, now, that being said, I've built a few of them and I made a lot of money on them. So if you want one of those, I'm really happy to help you with it, but um, it'll probably be the last thing you ever do with me because it, they're just not used. Um, and the reason that they're not used is because you're expecting the channel partners to do something for you, and they're not going to. Not unless it's totally, totally automated, which is why I've got a, um, I run a company, or not a company, uh, an association called the Channel Line Advisory Committee. And it was, the objective of it was to get about 35 people 
um, um, within the, the Canadian marketplace who can come together and talk so that our so that our like we're a publisher one of the things we do is a publishing is so that they can tell us if they think that our articles are going in the right direction or not going in the right direction <clears throat> because if you look at just about any publisher they don't have any real feet on the street talking to people every day about how does this work and how does that work and so on so we wanted to do that somehow it went from uh, guaranteed what we did for the first people that it wouldn't go past 35 we now have a thousand people on it um, and we then ended it about a year and a half ago because we got what we wanted out of it and we've had so many people like I mean I get I, I get at least one call a week and some weeks I'll get 10 or 15 from people say how come I'm not getting notices about when when the meetings are and I say, well, because we don't have it anymore. So now we're bringing it back because I'm really tired of being screamed at from people who are good friends of mine because they've, we've known them for so long <clears throat> and who are telling me that I have no right to turn this thing off. Um, sometimes things get bigger than yourself. Um, so, but the point about it is... Uh, um, you need to really go out there and know who you want to talk to. We, we take a lot of information from that Channel Line Advisory Council meeting, or did, to build it. We go out there and we ask them questions, like right on the street, we go out all the time. Like every time I go to a, an event, um, and I go to a lot of them because being a publisher, you get invited out to everything. Because, not because they like me, but they like my database. Um, and how they can get news into it and we go out and we'll talk to which no other no other publishers do that I know of we'll start talking to the channel partners right there and we'll put it like I'll walk up to them and Pam will, Pam will be a, a test to this because she's does the videoing for me usually and I'll walk up to somebody and say okay if you're giving one piece of advice to your other channel partners what would you give ask more questions and, ask more questions maybe but immediately we give them that and we take it back and then we put it onto our websites and um, and people you know people come back to us like when we come to the events and they say you know um, you're not gonna put a microphone in my face again I go um, not if you don't want me to well you know what if you want to I'll do it don't, don't, don't worry about it I've never had like they never come back and say no the channel is, they're very insecure people. They've been brought up to be insecure because, like I said before, they're the nerds or the geeks or whatever. Um, when Bill Gates became the richest person in the world and probably and known as a super geek, um, that helped them a lot, but not to where they want to be. They work hard, very, very hard on your half, behalf, on anybody's behalf that they're working with to try to make it as good as possible but they're not business people so um, there's a lot of the opportunity though comes from the fact that their customers love them we went out um, through the channel through our through the council and we asked other people to send it off and we got 2300 responses to be uh, uh, as to what the name is that they want to be um, called. So, you know, is it a VAR, is it a resour, is it a system integrator? A hundred percent of them, a hundred percent said they wanted to be called a trusted business advisor. So that was after we went through, we had a hundred names, I think it was, and then we went down to 10 names. And at the 10 names limit, we were going to go down to three names, but we couldn't because we, they already, you know, 100%, you're not going to get better, especially when you're going out to the same people. Um, and they really are. That's what they are. They, their customers love them. They won't move.